The you see on the screen are all done with code. The fragment shader programs calculate the color of each pixel on the screen using simple functions, which are often enough to build quite complex simulations. Shader Toy is a popular website where people can pause their code and browse other users' creations. Like these beautiful cloud simulations by Nimitz. And here's my Shader Toy clone, written in C++, working as a standalone desktop application. It uses the same variable conventions as the website, for example, giving the user access to the current time. You can even copy the code from the site and paste it into the app in place of the main image function. When you change the text, the shader is automatically compiled and if there are any errors, they are displayed in the panel below the code. The mouse position variable is not supported, so we go to the line showing the error message and delete it. The code is recompiled and we can admire the cloud simulation, which looks exactly like on the website. Let's take a look at the code, starting from the main file and the MyFrame class. Jumping in the constructor, we can see that everything is organized in two splitters, allowing the user to control the size of the panels. The stylized text control is where the user can enter the shader code. The name of the class is really accurate, as we can style it however we want. We set the margins, the word wrap mode, and the initial text but most importantly, we set up the lexer. The stylized text control can do syntax highlighting, and to enable it, we need to tell it how to interpret the text. Since OpenGL shader language is similar to C++, we choose CPP here. We just need to specify the list of GLSL keywords, and we have the syntax highlighting. Now we can set the colors of various code elements for both the dark and the light modes. OK, going back to the constructor, we have another text control, a regular one this time, used to display the compilation logs. Finally, on the right, there is our OpenGL canvas introduced in my previous OpenGL tutorials. From the functional perspective, the most important thing is shader compilation. This is done on initialization and every time the text changes. This process has two steps building the program and showing the error log. For the compilation, we use a very simple vertex shader, which passes the position to the fragment stage. The fragment shader code is provided by the user and we build both using a helper shader program class. The build method compiles the shaders and links them together, streaming the error messages to the last build log variable. Similarly, the compile functions used by the build method also write to the last build log. OpenGL ID for the compiled program is stored in the shader program variable. It is then used in the canvas onPaint method. After activating the program, we update its uniform variables, the resolution and the time passed values. The time is updated in OnTimer, where we use the high-resolution clock from the standard library to set the elapsed seconds variable. We need to draw some geometry for the user's fragment shader to work. The DrawArrays function draws previously set up buffers, which describe a full-screen rectangle composed of two triangles. And that's it for this tutorial. Feel free to download the full code, experiment with it, maybe implement the iMouse variable, and have fun with shaders. Thanks for watching.